In this video, we're gonna take the smallest size subwoofer in car audio and pair it with the largest enclosure in car audio. This is the Rampage 6.5. It's a 1000 watt six inch subwoofer and we're gonna put it inside of this, a rear loaded horn enclosure. This style of enclosure is notorious for its maximum output. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I 3D model, design, and install, and then we're gonna pump some sounds through it. The Rampage 6.5 come packaged in a manufacturer's brown box. It's triple packaged, which is always a good thing to see with subwoofers this beefy. And yeah, Big Jeff threw in a few freebies for me here. Right there, you got a lanyard, B2 audio. Also got a thank you card, which is pretty cool. And these are the, the actual mounting supports right here. This is the little foam tape that goes on the bottom of the subwoofers. Creates a tight seal for you. And of course you get the sticker. Everybody likes stickers. Reaching inside the box, I can see that they got some support on top. This is always good to see. This thing is well packaged. I, I gotta give it to them. They, they went above and beyond. Got foam plus the cardboard. Two ply cardboard at that. Which is always good to see for subwoofers this heavy. And there it is. But you just can't pull this thing out of here like that. You need to pull <laughs> the entire foam surround out of there. You see this? This is... This is how you package a subwoofer, people. Just saying. None of that old white styrofoam crap that gets everywhere. They actually snug fitted this thing and contoured it to the actual foam. And you can see why. I mean, this woofer is basically all motor. Look at that. The basket is shorter than the motor is tall. And right there on the dust cap, you can see the B2 logo and yes that is a all carbon fiber dust cap that they chose to go with on this and i must admit the black red and white looks amazing i like the colorway of this subwoofer not just saying that because b2 audio is one of my favorite brands i'm just saying that because i dig white subwoofers ct sounds brazilian sounds i guess i'm a sucker for the black and white colorway Anyway, you can see that they do have around 10 gauge push terminals on here. They got a red progressively rolled spider in there and that's for increased excursion on such a small frame. And you can see that two inch voice coil there as well. Tensile leads are dual tensile leads and they are, which you will see later on, glued and stitched into the spider assembly. Pulling the boot off the magnet, you will see that this is a triple stack 17 pound magnet on it. Do the math yourself. That is 60 something percent of the weight of this subwoofer is actually the motor on it, which is amazing. Further measurements will tell you that the subwoofer have a mounting depth of around six inches. It has a front mount baffle cutout of 6.3 inches, overall diameter of seven inches. I know some people, you know, look at that as being very important for displacement purposes when doing their calculations. And when measuring inside of the surround to the other inside of the surround, you'll see that you get around four and a quarter inches. Another important measurement to take would be the mid surround measurement, where you take the middle of one side of the surround and measure to the other side. And in this case, you got about five inches or so. The software I use to model this enclosure is called Hornrest. Hornrest specializes in horn enclosures, and I have used it often in the past with many other drivers. And I always believe in using the software so you won't waste any time and material. And in this case, horn rest was the tool of choice, just in case you guys were wondering. Right now, what you guys are looking at is the trunk space of my 2018 Chevy Impala. This is front and rear section of it, and this enclosure is gonna be facing the front. 
Right now you're looking at a 3D representation of this horn enclosure. It has a throat of six inches and it has a mouth of 12 inches. Total length of the horn is 118 inches. The blue shading on the screen represents the overall displacement of this enclosure, which takes up 5.4 cubic foot of my available trunk space. And if you do the math, that's roughly 30% of my available trunk space. The internal volume of this enclosure is gonna be 3.8 cubic foot. And despite this covering the entire floor of my trunk space, this is actually a low profile design. So drop a comment in the section below. Would this be something that you install in your trunk? Next up is wood selection. I decided to go with MDF for this build. Uh, yes, I know that MDF is quite heavy, but I like the density of it and the sound signature of it as well. Right now, what you guys are looking at are two different dimensions of MDF. You have some half inch MDF along with three quarter inch MDF. The front baffle is going to be three quarters inch MDF. All the internal walls of the enclosure is going to be half inch MDF. Uh, top and bottom is also going to be three quarter inch MDF. Right now, what you're looking at is the glue up. Uh, this came out quite well. It's really, really large, but you know, it's going to be worth it because I know that horn enclosures are extremely efficient. And in this shot right here, you can see the flare of it. And the line is progressively gets larger and more flared as it go. Real loaded horn design. And of course, some people will call this a folded horn as well because of the way that it folds upon itself. But just know that this thing is gonna be extremely heavy. This is about an entire sheet of plywood, which is not lightweight. Right now, what you guys are looking at is me getting this thing uh, installed. So excited at this point. There's nothing more exciting than getting these screws in after wiring this thing up and placing it inside the trunk. In this shot, you can see that I had to relocate the amplifier to the top of this thing. I just know this is not a permanent location. This is just a test rig. Uh, and it's not gonna, I don't think it's gonna put out enough to even damage anything, but it, 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 it wouldn't fit anywhere else because of the height of the amplifier. Uh, all worked out in the end, but I just wanna give you guys a, you know, a little bit of what we go through as installers with this type of enclosure. This thing is massive for this little six inch subwoofer. Let me know in the comment section below, do you think this is even gonna sound good? I'd like to take a moment to give a shout out to Big Jeff over at BigJeffAudio.com. Big Jeff is out here supporting the community and I really appreciate what he does. So I just wanted to take this time and say thanks because every time I reached out to this guy, he's always looked out for me. So I'm happy to say that if you're in the market for anything car audio, look in the description box below, click that affiliate link and use budget base head to get 5% off your next purchase. This will save you an additional 5% off and it will give a big thanks to this channel. All right, y'all, so we're back here in the Impala and today we got something special for you guys. We have a horn enclosure. That is a 6.5 inch subwoofer by B2 Audio and that is from their Rampage series. This is one of the, the most powerful six and a half inch subwoofers on the market it is 1000 watts rms believe it or not that little bitty subwoofer right there is a thousand is a thousand watts rms you see the mouth of that that's not a regular ported enclosure the difference between a ported and a regular ported enclosure and a horn enclosure is significant the way that they operate is different this is more like a flared t-line enclosure if that make any sense to anyone but anyway what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be SPL testing this to see exactly what it can do and at what power rating it can get that. In the kick, we have the mini bass meter by SPL Lab. This bass meter is going to give us our sound pressure level scores. Sound pressure level meaning SPL. It's going to tell you in decibels how loud you are in the cabin. How much pressure are you building up in the cabin? The question is, can that six inch subwoofer do anything? <laughs> this is a 2018 Chevy Impala full size sedan. And we're gonna see if this thing can produce enough sound 
to register on the mini base meter <laughs> so leave a comment in the sections below do you guys think it's going to measure anything <laughs> and at how much what is the score you think we're going to get by the end of the video to measure our power output we're going to be using the amm1 this is a steve mead device he partnered with demore engineering and they came up with the amm1 it has a dyno mode in which we can measure our peak output is going to hold that value and at what impedance it got that at okay <clears throat> so that's what we're going to be doing all of our initial testing starts off with a base sweep you want to do a base sweep to find out what your cabin is peaking at at what frequency should you run this spl test so we're using this android application it's going to do a base sweep down to 20 hertz from 150 to 20 hertz and it's going to be in 30 second duration all right so let's hit play That little thing, that little, and okay, that's 20 hertz. So, it got down to 0 .0, 0, 0, 0, 0.1 ohms at 109 watt. All right, so on the meter, we got a 125.5. This meter doesn't register anything under 120, so for it to get a 125 is pretty cool. But you seen that was only 100 watts. That's 10% of what it can actually take. So let's see at what frequency they got. 36 hertz. Okay. 36 hertz. This environment is calling for 36 hertz. So we got everything reset. This thing is on 36 hertz and I'm excited to see what exactly it's gonna do. This is bananas. So we're gonna push play and we're gonna slowly increase the volume. 36 hertz. at two ohms of impedance oh my goodness it took it took the beans man it took the beans that's a 134.1 in the kick that little thing actually registered man that is crazy 134.1 in the kick it makes me want to play around with more frequencies now yeah man I think I may have been crawling into it too fast, y'all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it 30, 36 hertz, but I'm going to take my time with it. So I'm going to crawl a little bit slower. Let's get it. 36 hertz. A little bit slower. And there you go guys that's a slow crawl and it still reached its potential but it reached it at 725 watts at 2.8 ohms of impedance so there you go you didn't really need to feed these horns too much power it'll reach it it'll get there fairly uh with fairly low power so i would say that this is a very efficient design let's see what we got down here 133.5 let you guys know this ain't no tricks or nothing. Still 36 hertz. 133.5. So there you have it. You didn't have to feed it a lot of power like we was doing in the beginning. I guess you can consider that a torture test. 
I may be able to turn the box around and do something, but uh, at this point, it's a six cent sub. What are you expecting? Um, to say that it got close to a 135, in my opinion, is good. So it's only one little six, and it only has so much surface area. So unless you get something bigger, I think that's probably what you're gonna end up with is a 135 in this case. But man, that sounded good, that was fun. Now let's see what it does on music. Is this thing musical? In my opinion, probably not. But hey, you don't, don't judge just yet, okay? It may, it may be more than a one hit wonder. Let's look at some music. This is gonna be Rex Seller by Xavier Russian featuring Richard Tall Slim. All right, here we go. Let's get a little volume on this. And I'm gonna put it on, put it on about 40. That's what we did the base sweep at. So it should be fine at 40. And here we go. This is called See Through, same artist, Xavier Russin. Deflex my swole up, all body they fold up. Shout to say I done glowed up, double text on my phone up. Fuck with your boy, I'm the man of the year, I'm not a fan of your peers. Serving my fate, I'ma hand him the shears, he not the man of your peers. Hold up a lion, I'm trampling fears, I let the man in the mirror. Cry me a river to stand in the tears, you better stand in the clear. I'm going crazy, niggas from Daisy, how are they ever gonna fuck? All right, so there you guys have it, man. Just a short little demo of this type of enclosure with this subwoofer and let you guys see what you can get. As you guys can see, just now it was only... It, it wasn't getting a whole lot of power and it was moving a whole lot because uh, horn enclosures are typically considered uh, very efficient because of the waveguide design. And interesting thing on music, it actually peaks out at 35 hertz. At 35 hertz, it got around a, what was it, a 130, 129? Yeah, 129.6 decibels is what it got on music of course i'm not even maxing it out i let you guys see the real time values and it wasn't getting any more like 300 watts so yes if you want you know an efficient design and you still want to get fairly loud while saving a lot of space this design here i say would be a go-to takes a lot of wood to do it but as you guys can see that's a low profile build man it's only a like what eight inches high it's not even that it's like i think it's seven and a half inches tall overall you know so there you have it very efficient design very small space saver that you can put in your car put a little power on and then you can be just fine you don't need a base 3k like i got in there you don't need that much power to push that little guy but anyway just wanted to bring this to you guys. It's fun. I've been seeing that, you know, people have been a little bit interested in small subwoofer design. So I'm going to be bringing you guys more of these. I have actually four of those subwoofers from Big Jeff. Gave me an amazing discount on it. And I'm going to be bringing you guys more content on small design. So 
just hanging there with me. Until the next time, it's the Budget Bass Head, and I'm out.